so back in Texas. It's so awesome. And the weather's like so much better than the last time we were here. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the many stops for us over the last few years of our whirlwind trip around the world building water features. Isn't it crazy that, I mean, what was it, three years ago, maybe even four years ago, that uh, we did that project in San Diego? And yeah, it seems like forever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, start out there, great memories out there, then... And then we came here, and then you did some other projects with Alan. Yeah. And this is still, like, we came back here, and this is still one of my favorite projects, just because of the whole atmosphere and having such a fantastic customer. Well, you remember, like, you remember the consultation? Like, just the consultation, and we, we met in the back, and we sat back there by his pool, and, and instantly our eyes started kind of going, and he was like, I think I really want to do something in the front yard. And we came around the corner of the house over there, and we were like, uh, yeah, yep. like to bring a stream through this grove of all these live oaks and pistache trees and cottonwoods. cottonwoods and stuff like just awesome. And now we're sitting in a fire pit that we designed. The fact that um, <laughs> the fact that Matt actually and he's become our friend now, yeah. it's not just a customer, he's become our friend. The fact that he actually let us just kind of run wild and he followed up with executing a lot of this stuff like doing the fire pit yep actually doing the barn like that was just on a whim like i'll be so awesome if you like converted this to, into an office and <laughs> he's like okay that's what i'm gonna do and what he did with it like we've been saying up there the last couple days walking out those doors the whole vision came to fruition where you wake up in the morning that big waterfall is right in front of you you're like up in the trees looking down and it's you're transported to a different place the the view from up on top and I don't even remember if we said like do something up on top I just remember thinking this needs to be like a man cave office whatever you want to call it yep. she, giant she shed <laughs> and then that's our bedroom now like that's where we stayed for this whole project Matt calls it our Airbnb yeah right <laughs> so it, it really is that so we're, we're super lucky to be able to have the opportunity to stay here on site and do this which is not something we normally do we don't normally get the time to come back and enjoy these projects um, like we have been the last the last week or so. And being immersed in it with seeing the way the plant's starting to fill in, how the pond is maturing, all the fish that Matt has in there now. <laughs> we're so lucky. to. Have, we, it's almost like we're getting a chance to see what it looks like to live here in yeah. a week's time. Doing stuff like this, like these travel projects, is such a departure from the stuff that we do at home. Because we're immersed in like the everyday at home and we're dealing with like our crew, our team, our customers. Coming here, it's almost like we're insulated from the rest of the world and you and I can just have the best time and we get a chance to bring in some people that might not have otherwise had the opportunity to be a part of something sure. like this. And, but our customers are incredible. Every single one, we've not had a bad experience. Not, yeah. not a single one. It's Everyone just, has been so accommodating and they are just super excited to be in this thing with us. Cause you're, when we're doing something like this, mm -hmm. you're in it with us. Yeah. A hundred percent because the way Matt ran around and got boulders and uh, got the machines lined up and did all the logistics that have to be done to pull off something like this is not something that you and I can do being so far away from home. You touched down it a little bit, you know, like in, like when we come and do these projects, how we're almost like in our own little bubble like away from our business it's almost like we're on vacation right <laughs> don't Bill, listen don't tell our wives that <laughs> it's almost like we're on vacation doing what we love to do right yeah. we work hard when we're out here we get things done in an epic amount of time um, we get to be extremely creative our customers make us feel like we're at home they cater to us they put us up in their houses they you know get us the airbnbs they make sure that we're having fun when we're out here um and like for me I am on vacation, right? Because I'm using my vacation time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You, this is something I think that's been coming for a long time. Um, I'm not a big be believer in luck. I think you put yourself in position to achieve the things that you're after. Yeah. And I think the, the fact, we've talked about this for probably at least a dozen years. Yep. By starting out traveling around, just doing the aquascape, like build upon day stuff, and we'd be on these advanced builds, but it'd be so cool to travel around yeah. and do this as, as like part of a business. 
And then when we really started to talk about it seriously, and then the, the thing started to roll in, we knew how to capitalize on it because it had to be with the right guys. Like we, do, we are so fortunate that we, we have access to some of the best pond builders in the world. Oh, 100%. Like, we couldn't pull this stuff off without having that pool of people. Like you can't just show up, it's not a training event. We all have a, a collective vision to, to put out the very best result for the customer. Imagine having this this waterfall, just this one outside your window when you wake up in the morning. And we're right up on it now. Yep. And it's not overpowering. It's not at Huge all. Huge boulders, but the water flow is just perfect. The way it's like bouncing off the rocks and rolling down on this big, huge piece that's slanted in towards the other yeah. one. I absolutely love this section of waterfall. What's so cool about just this spot of the pond, this looks just like a park. And these trees is the one of the reasons we put the pond here because as we were looking at the initial design, we're like, oh man, how do we not move this over here? And so these trees are about the messiest trees I've ever seen oh. in my life. Um, but to take the tree down to not deal with the mess would seem like a crime, right? right? Like to lose this tree, the entire feature would be changed, right? right. It would just, and it's so comfortable to sit underneath the natural canopy of the tree. And so to deal with that, we put in a giant intake bay. And you can see how well that thing's working. I want to actually show them, like we talk about intake bays all the time. Uh -huh. Let, that one has debris in it. Let's show them what maintenance looks like in an intake bay. All right, come on. Number one, before I before we show like why it's so great to have an intake base skimmer, uh -huh. let's talk about how the depth is important and oh. why. Yeah, like so if, if we've got you know easily 14 inches of water sitting in here, right? right? And if you had two to three inches of water, what would happen is when you went to try to scoop the leaves up, the bottom of that net would just bounce along you the bang gravel. Off the rocks. First, you're going to break down your net really, really fast. Yeah. Second, there's no way you're going to be able to scoop that stuff in. You want to be able to like effortlessly get in there and get full baskets of leaves. It also gives more time for this stuff to just to kind of swirl around. When it's super shallow, that wa the suction actually pulls those leaves down faster right into the gravel. Yeah. And ultimately, ending up clogging your intake bay. Right. So what's so great about this? Super simple. We've got just a nice almost like a pool skimmer net, right? It's got a and basket and on work. it. Yeah. I'm just gonna go through here, and as you can see, I, I've got plenty of water to get underneath this stuff, and I'm just scooping this stuff right out. Hey, buddy. And there's the fish swimming in there. <laughs> this is therapeutic, Ryan. I feel like I've taken my stress level down a good three notches just by skimming here. <laughs> that took all of 30 seconds yeah. to skim that out. Super easy. Another great part about these intake base skimmers is if you saw the fish swim in there, the fish love coming into these intake bays. Koi are carp, right? Yeah. And carp are river dwelling fish, so they love playing in those currents. So the entire time we've been staying here, I've been watching those big giant koi come in here and pick around and look for food in here and they swim back and forth. It's almost like a fish treadmill for yeah. them. They like go in and out and in and out. It's like a big clay date for koi. <laughs> So we've got five pumps pulling in here, which is a pretty big current, right? Yeah, you can just like look at it. As fast as you pull that stuff out, more stuff's coming in. I'd like to show them what these five pumps are feeding. Yeah, let's go. Let's start at the wetland. Filter. All right.
this is what's filtering the pond. So we're pumping water from that intake yep. up to here and then kind of explain what happened from there. So we've got, we've got, I think in this particular one, I think we have four centipedes, yep. right? Two snorkel vaults. So water comes in, comes in through these centipedes. The idea of the water coming into the centipedes is it allows sediments and stuff to settle out. So anything that the intake bay couldn't gather and pre-filter, it allows more of those solids to settle out down in there. If for some reason it got past the centipede, then it goes up into a layer of aqua blocks, allowing more sediment to settle out before it gets up into the rock and gravel, which is really just a giant, the simplest way to explain it, it's a giant breeding ground for bacteria. Mm -hmm. The more colonized bacteria you have growing throughout your entire water feature, the cleaner and cleaner that body of water is going to be. And we're right? talking about like a good bacteria here, right? yes. not like what you would think of as bacteria when you have a problem. But this is this is fairly simple. We've got clean out ports with those snorkels. Yep. Once a year, it gets pumped down, washed out. We eject all that dirty water and we start over again. Yeah, we're not, you're not back flushing it or anything else. The idea is to work more with Mother Nature rather than against Mother Nature. And so a wetland filter, if you think of wetlands in nature, wetlands are the biggest, um, easiest way to filter out water, yep. right? They're protected. So the, we've got two pumps there for the wetland. We've got the third pump, which is running the jets for circulation inside the pond. Mm -hmm. Let's go show that with her. Right, coming off the wetland, one of the big initiatives for us creating this entire space was making it interactive. So we've got stairs. Remember the steps for giants? Yeah, <laughs> these are normal stairs. These are giant <laughs> stairs. So we come down the steps and then that leads us into this park-like setting with these DG gravel paths underneath the canopy of trees, leading us to all the different sections of the pond yeah. and stream as you walk through. So if you look at the surface of the water, water rippling here, we've got, I think, Nine, eight or nine jets nine inside jets. here. So all these jets are extremely important. We've got jets down the bottom of the pond, which is four feet deep, yep. and we've got jets on the surface. The idea here is it's pushing everything towards that collection point, which is the intake bay. Yeah, you've got the, the flow of the stream pushing everything, and then we got that choke point, which really forces a lot of water just through here. Then we've got the jets there, and there, and everywhere else. If you didn't have the jets, it's not that the pond wouldn't work, this just really helps accelerate all that debris. And because there's so much windblown debris that falls in this pond, we wanna make sure some of these leaves that are sitting way over here, eventually work back over into that intake bay. So 160 feet of twisting, turning stream, the most naturalistic scene I think we could have accomplished. And wow. you and I have both hiked some of the streams here in Texas. Yep. This is a direct representation, I think, of that. Well, and this, it, like when we first came out on that consultation, like we talked about before, we saw the natural topography and how it just gently sloped down through here. And I love doing streams yeah. that have that gentle meandering slope. Not that I don't love doing the huge ones like we did out in California with those big giant crashing falls all over the place, but this is way more realistic yeah. than those big giant crashing ones. And this is most most contours of most yards. You don't yeah. only get that contour to work with. This is way more achievable than yeah. most suburban properties. Anytime we have a crossing, we want to have somewhere to go, right? So yep. we've got that, those stones going over to the barn. These stones are leading us to this fire pit area. Yeah, there should be a destination, right? Every single time you create a bridge or a stepping stone. And then of course, like there's something to stop and look at as you come across the, the stepping stones here. So we've got, we're right next to that waterfall as we cross. Now we're 10 feet away. 
and you can just faintly hear it. And that's because of the way the water is directed. Yep. We've got an urn right here that's next to us. This is a pretty tranquil, quiet spot. You can just hear the ambiance of the, the sound yep. of the water, but it changes from being next to the big waterfall or up in the barn there. It makes it relaxing, right? Yeah. Like this is the area you would stop and have like a picnic, right? It just kind of quiets down a little bit. You don't have the chaos of like the big giant waterfall over there. Yeah. We wouldn't want a giant waterfall like that sitting right here. No, traditionally like around a fire pit is a gathering spot. You're having conversation. You're kind of reconnecting it yep. at the end of the day. And you're being overpowered by a water sound. It wouldn't be very tranquil. Well, you're going to try to talk over the sound of a yeah. water. Everybody's yelling to each other, right? And that's not the point of it. I mean, that happens in my house without a waterfall, so. <laughs> Going around the back side, and what's cool is as you make your way around the back of these magnolias and the hollies, you can kind of just see glimpses of that water bubbling out yep. of the top of those urns, and then it opens up and we're connecting with the front of the house here, right? So this is this is one way to connect to the front of the house. You can go completely the opposite way, but as you're walking by here, just stop right here and take this in. Well, and this is his office. When we heard that Matt's office was right behind us, these windows behind us, we said, how do we make sure that that waterfall is visible from his office? Yep. And then what can we give with some curb appeal up in front here and some things up closer to the house? And so the way that the trees are placed over there, the way that waterfall is almost framed out, like there's a natural picture frame around that waterfall, and then the way these urns and stuff sit, this is the best view. It is. With silence. Most people are gonna start here and say, oh my gosh, where do I go? They come up these stairs, they see that pathway, there's not a person, you've heard me say this a thousand times, there's yeah. not a person in the world that can resist crossing a bridge. 100%. So they're gonna go up on that bridge, discover that pathway, they move through the pathway, discover a fire pit off in the distance, they get an, another epic view of that stream going this way, like I really love how it twists and turns right here. And they almost don't know that there's a giant pond down there at this point. I mean houses do you go to with a bridge going to the front door? Uh, there's right now just one. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like my house sucks because it doesn't have a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got the trio of spheres, which with what might be like one of my favorite clusters of rocks. Again, this is, this is hard to do, right? It's really, it's actually really easy to create that sheet of water. Yeah. Right? Big rock on one side, big rock on the other side, a veil of water coming down in between here. This is actually multiple rocks placed strategically together to give you a one of a kind natural looking waterfall. Those last two pumps, that's where these are going. We're feeding one five to nine to that cluster of urns. The other one is going to this section of spheres up here at the top. We're actually dumping a little bit of water into the pool. We didn't have to use all that water to run these spheres or the urns. So we're, we're creating all that volume for the stream that you see leading all the way down to the pond. I love coming back here. It's such a special property. Um, it's one of my favorites of all times. Yeah. I hope you guys really enjoyed this, which brings me to the reason we're actually here. We're gonna show you what's in store for next week. Probably one of the most epic fountainscapes we've ever done to date. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs>